I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, my Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey there, friends. Miss Colleen and Pickles here. Hi, friends. Guess what I made yesterday? Hmm. Did you make cookies? Mm-mm. Did you make some kind of food? Uh-huh. Was it cake? Nope. Okay, Pickles, I give up. What did you make yesterday? I made bread with my grandma. And it was so neat. First we made the dough and then we let it sit for a long time and it got really big and puffy. My grandma calls that rising. That sounds so cool. It was. And once the dough rose big enough, we baked it. It was the best bread I've ever tasted. You know, that reminds me of what we're learning this week. Bread? Sort of. This week, as we learn about the Apostles' Creed, we are learning that Jesus rose from the dead after being dead for three days. What does that have to do with bread? I'll explain that after we sing our worship song together. Let's stand to worship God. And friends, see if you can hear the line of the creed we're learning this week.
the communion of the saints. The forgiveness of sins and the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. This is what I believe. The line we're learning from the Apostles' Creed this week is the third day he rose again from the dead. Jesus died on a cross to pay for our sins, the things we do that hurt God and other people. But then Jesus rose from the dead. He came back to life after he died. Jesus is the only person ever to come back to life and to stay alive. That's so amazing! Let's read a section from the Bible that tells us about Jesus rising from the dead. And friends, remember that the Bible is God's true words written to us so that we can know God and what he cares about. Hey Pickles, there's an angel in the section we're reading today. Do you want to read that part? Of course! Okay, friends, let's read Matthew 28, verses 5 to 10. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Jesus was dead for three days and then he rose from the grave. After Jesus rose from the grave, he showed up to women first, and then to the disciples, and then to hundreds of people. And Jesus is alive. Friends, yes, let's yell out together that Jesus is alive. One, two, three. Jesus is alive! Colleen, do we have a picture we can draw in our books? to help us remember that Jesus beat death? Yes, we do. Let's take a short drawing break together. Hey, Rip Kids! Let's take some time and draw what we've been learning. We have learned that on the third day, he rose again and he is Jesus. So today we're gonna draw the tomb and what it looked like after Jesus' body was no longer there. So let's get out something to draw the main picture with. And we're gonna start kind of low and to the left down here. And this part is a little tricky and you can be a little creative with it. We're gonna start low and kind of do a little bit of curvies up 
and then back down. We're just drawing um, the outline of the big rock or the tomb, okay? So start low and then kind of draw some curves and back down. All right, cool. So on each side, we're gonna draw these kind of two little mounds. So we're going to start over here, just a little bit further than where our marker started. And we're gonna draw kind of a little mound like that and connect it. Smooth that out there. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and it can be a little smaller or a little bigger or, or however you want your tomb to look. Okay, now near the center, we're going to draw the big rock that was moved to the side. So it's gonna be kind of like a circle-ish. And the nice thing about this is we don't have to draw a perfect circle because rocks aren't perfect circles anyway, right? <laughs> so just kind of make it circle-ish. Okay, now to the side of it, we're gonna draw the entryway to the tomb. And so we're gonna just kind of kind of draw a big curve like this just to the side of our rock. So a big curve. And then we're gonna connect it. Oops, it's gonna connect it all the way across. Okay, now the last thing we have to do just to kind of get the outline of our tomb is just to connect the bottoms. So you can just kind of connect it like this. It can be a little bumpy or wavy because it's just the ground. Okay, so let's add a little bit of details. Um, so in the picture that we have for this week, um, there are some plants that are kind of growing in the mounds. So I'm gonna draw a couple leaves, that, and I'm gonna draw one over here with a stem. Okay, we're gonna just add a little bit more just to give our rock and our tomb a little dimension. So I'm just gonna kind of add a wavy line down there kind of a wavy line on the rock. And maybe one over here in my mouth, just to kind of give it a little bit more. Okay, so here's my tomb. Now, I'm gonna keep my marker out because I'm using a black marker and I'm gonna color in this entryway because it's dark. So if you have a dark color, whether it's black or like a gray or any other shade or color that's just kind of a darker tone, maybe you wanna use that. Or, hey, feel free to be creative. So I'm gonna go ahead and color mine in. There. All right, let's color. Okay, so I chose brown and green. Well, you can use whatever colors you'd like. You can have fun with it. You can use more realistic colors. It is up to you, but I'm gonna color the entire tomb a brown. Um, so maybe like a brown or like a gray might make sense. Um, or like I said, have fun and do something creative. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is color the plants green. All right, here we go. So here's my tomb to help me remember that on the third day, he rose again. Okay, let's get back to the message. Before the break, we learned that Jesus died for our sins 
but three days later, he rose from the dead and appeared to lots of people. Jesus is alive! Before the break, we talked about how we all sin and that Jesus paid for our sin by dying on the cross. And we learned that Jesus didn't stay dead. He's alive! Let's read another section from our Bibles in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 to 22. It says, But Christ really has been raised from the dead. He is the first of all those who will rise from the dead. Death came because of what a man did. Rising from the dead also comes because of what a man did. Because of Adam, all people die. So because of Christ, all will be made alive. That passage tells us that Jesus really has been raised from the dead. And that is so important to our faith because when Jesus rose from the dead, he beat sin and death. That passage also said something about Adam. I have a cousin named Adam. Is it his fault we all die? I didn't think he caused that much trouble. And what did he do to cause us all to die? <laughs> Not that, Adam, silly. The first people that God made in the Bible are called Adam and Eve, and they are the first people to sin. And because they sinned, we all sin too. We all do things that hurt God and other people. We do. And remember, our sin separates us from God. So because of Adam, we all sin and we all eventually die. Our passage said that our death came because of Adam's sin. Oh, well that sounds pretty awful. I'm glad there's more to that verse. Oh, me too, Pickles. So. If we look at again at our passage from 1 Corinthians, we read that because of Christ, that's another name for Jesus, all will be made alive. And it says that we will rise from the dead because of what a man did. That means that when we die, we'll be made alive in heaven with God. Oh, I think I get it. Jesus died and then he rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everyone who trusts in him will be made alive in him and get to be with him forever. Is that because Jesus rose from the dead and he beat the power of sin and death? Yes, that's exactly what that means, Pickles. And that is a reason to have hope. That reminds me of our memory verse. Friends, stand up and pop the bubbles to uncover our verse. First Peter 3.15 But make sure that in your hearts you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. Be ready to give the reason for it, but do it gently and with respect. Friends, repeat after me with our hand motions. But make sure that in your hearts you honor Christ as Lord. Always be ready to give an answer to anyone who asks you about the hope you have. 
Be ready to give the reason for it, but do it gently and with respect. Good job. How amazing is it that Jesus beat sin and death when he rose from the dead? And when we put our trust in Jesus, we get to be with him forever. Friends, our takeaway this week is, I believe Jesus rose from the dead and he's alive. Thank you for joining us today, friends. Remember to tell your grown-ups what you learned about God today. And let's pray. God, thank you so much that Jesus rose from the dead and beat sin and death. And thank you that when we put our trust in him, that we get to be with him in heaven forever too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye, friends. See you later, friends.